Hey folks, Mark back here with another vinyl update. Been a while. I looked and I think it's been since August that I've done a vinyl update. That's quite a while. So um, I've, that's three and a half months ago and I've done a little bit of record shopping here and there. I made a trip to Chicago at the end of September. Saw a couple of shows out there and some friends and um, the shows I saw were San Etienne and then I saw uh, Front 242 on a different night. Two bands I'd been a long time fan of, but had never seen live before. So now I can mark them off my to see list. Of course, I'd see them again if they came through. But I digress. Anyway, um, I hope everybody's been doing well. It is really, really cold here in Cleveland. It has started snowing. It's in the 20s. And, uh, you know, if you're not going to work or you have to go outside, pretty much indoors is the place to be. So I think that may be part of the impetus for me making a new video. So besides needing to uh, show you guys some of the cool stuff I found. Um, hopefully the glare won't be too bad on these. I will be watching that as I show these because I, I put plastic bags on everything that I don't, uh, plastic record sleeves on everything that doesn't previously come with one. So in any event, we'll start with a store here in Cleveland called Hofsfrau. Wait, Hofsfrau. I always get the name wrong. Hofsfrau Records, a really good little record shop here in Cleveland. And um, you never know what you're going to find there. Their turnover is, is really good. And um, I always manage to find some cool stuff. So here's a few things that I found in there. Um, first, Soul to Soul. This is their second album called Volume 2, 1990, A New Decade. I've always wanted to have this, never did get it. But I bought all the 12 inches from it. But never did um, get the album, so I finally picked that up on vinyl, U.S. copy. So i um, very glad to have that. A Dream's a Dream and Get a Life are both really good songs on that if you are interested in what they're all about. Here's something from 1969 from a group called White Eyes. This is issued on the Numero record, the Numero group record label, reissued label. And I don't think this had ever actually come out on vinyl before. Um, I think it had just been a cassette. Um, I could even be wrong about that, it, but I don't think it had ever come out on vinyl, so it finally has, and it's kind of a southern fried, psychedelic, laid-back rock kind of vibe. Um, not really sure how else to describe it, but, uh, you know, if you like laid-back, kind of like maybe later Moby Grape a little bit, I don't know, I like it, white eyes. Here's something, um, this is a guy named Mickey. And the album is called Eyewitness. And it's this label called PPU out of Detroit. And they're reissuing a lot of really obscure R&B from the early 1980s. Stuff that had come out on cassette or on limited run, they're putting back out. And it's, it's, some of it is extremely low-tech. I mean, <laughs> tape hiss and everything. But um, this has a charm to it. It's, uh, think, low-budget Rick James. You know, just really good solid grooves with very synthetic drums and um, atmospheric synths. I don't know, I like it a lot. Mickey. It's called Eyewitness. This is a new release, by the way. An album I never had. Always wanted it. Found it for a buck. Real Life, Heartland. Of course, the big hit off this is Send Me an Angel. Australian new wave group, synth pop group. Um, and the follow-up, Catch Me I'm Falling, is another fantastic song. I have the... Uh, single for that. Didn't know the album version's very different. So um, the rest of the album, though, is, is good. Good standard synth pop if you like Early in Excess or um, the another group I'm trying to think of, Pseudo Echo. Another group from around this time period. Good. I like it. Euroman Cometh. This is another album that's been long on my uh, want list. J.J. Burnell, bassist of The Stranglers. This is the only solo album he ever did, to my knowledge. Euro Man Cometh came out in 1979. I've had the 7-inch uh, from this called Freddie Laker, which is great. And uh, I've always, you know, wanted to get the album and finally pulled the trigger and bought it. Good, solid, bass-driven post-punk. Now, here's something that's very hard to describe. This is a band called Jefferty's Nile. Spaced out, sun-drenched psychedelia. Oh, no. Very um, lo-fi, underproduced. Uh, maybe like early Flaming Lips might be a, a, a good comparison. 
when I say early flaming lips, I mean 80s flaming lips. <laughs> um, I don't know, check them out. They're, uh, they're, they're not quite like anything that I've heard. Jefferty's Nile. There's a look at how to spell their name. Um, one thing, a great thing about Hossfrau Records is they have a great selection of reggae and dub. I mean, a fantastic selection of reggae and dub, and it's all well priced. Everything there in the reggae section is with you know around eleven ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine. You know, and it's, these are brand new copies. Most of them reissues. You know, but something I'd never heard of, Tapper Zuki, and it's an album called MLPA. Fantastic reggae um, with with a dub sensibility to it. And this originally came out in 1976, if I'm not mistaken. There you go. Tracy Ullman loved You Broke My Heart in 17 Places, her first album. Knew that she did a second album, but never really investigated. And found out that she did, in fact, do a second album in 1984 called You Caught Me Out. Actually, this is not 1984. I think it came out in 85. Yeah. Anyway. There it is. Um, it's called You Caught Me Out, Tracy Ullman. Not quite as strong as the first album, but it's still pretty good. The track on here that I love the most is Sunglasses. Fantastic song. Good English pop. And I've been slowly tracking down the Rolling Stones albums. I'm reading the Keith Richards autobiography, Life, which is pretty, pretty great. And I've always liked the Rolling Stones, you know, but not enough to go and buy all their stuff. But I'm concentrating mostly on the late 60s, early 70s stuff and kind of grabbing stuff when I find it. And I have it all pretty much digitally, but finding it on vinyl is always a special thing. And, and I don't mind finding well-loved copies of these albums. You know, I don't need to spend $25 on a, you know, deluxe reissue. A nice $2 copy that's not beat up. I mean, this has some sticker damage on it, you know, and it's been well-loved. But the album's in, in good shape. I gave it a good cleaning. Plays just fine. And uh, what a great album. I mean, Angie, I already knew. Silver Train, I already knew that because it was on the B side of Angie. And Do 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 Heartbreaker, knew that as well. But the rest of it I was unfamiliar with. So cleaned this up and gave it a spin the other night. And pretty fantastic. Um, I think next on my list will be uh, to find a well-loved copy of Sticky Fingers. I've noticed their albums have gone up in price over the years. You, know, you used to be able to find them for a nickel and a song, and now if you want a Rolling Stones album in good shape and an original, you're, you're going to spend around about the same you would as a reissue. So if I find them cheap, I, I pick them up. So that was a couple bucks there. Something new on the Dark Entries label. I always talk about this, this, this fantastic label. It's a label out of San Francisco, focusing mostly on dark wave and synth, synth pop and Italo disco, and um, primarily a reissue label, but have been really getting into the game of doing a lot of um, new releases as well by new acts. And this is a duo out of Detroit, I think, and they're called Looky Looky. Um, instrumental synth pop, very much like... Uh, something that could have been recorded by an Italo disco group from 1985, except it was recorded in 2017. Looky, looky, the EP's called Flamingo Boots, and it's the extended 12-inch throbbing maxi. That tells you exactly all you need to know about that. Another group I've kind of been looking to buy more by, stuff by is Controlled Bleeding, a wax tracks band from the 80s, and I believe early 90s. Um, just good kind of dark synth music along the lines of Front 242 and Frontline Assembly and um, not as hard as Ministry or anything Al Jorgensen might be related with, but um, if you like wax tracks, pick up stuff on By Control Bleeding. This is the Fodder Song 12-inch. And finally, last thing uh, I'm going to show you from the Hossfrau, Hossfrau Record Shop. Another act I've been buying his albums when I see them pretty cheap is Isaac Hayes. You know, every time I buy an Isaac Hayes album, I love it. And uh, this is no exception. To be continued, this album comes from, boy, I can't tell you the year, but uh, early 70s. So um, just good laid back r and I don't know, it sounds really good around midnight. Good late night record. To be continued. Now we'll switch over to a record store in Mentor. I didn't buy much from this place. I went there on Black Friday just to support a record store Black Friday, and they typically get a lot of the record store day releases and Black Friday stuff, so I, I always 
I've learned last Black Friday, go to this place first and see what's there. Um, and they have a decent use section as well. Um, it's one of those places that takes a long time to go through, but, um, you know, pretty decent. So I found a few things there I'll show you. First, uh, 12 inch by National Velvet. This is a Canadian uh, guitar-based uh, alternative group from the late 80s. This is a video, uh, Much Music, the uh, Canadian version of MTV, Much Music used to play a video to this, Flesh Under Skin. Well, I found a 12 inch with an extended mix. It was a buck. Catchy song there, look them up, National Velvet, Flesh Under Skin. They remind me a lot of Concrete Blonde. And then the Flirts, love the Flirts, good uh, 80s disco there, produced by Bobby Orlando, otherwise known as Bobby O, a major influence on the Pet Shop Boys. And this is a 12-inch they did called Miss You. Nope, not the Rolling Stones song, it's their own song, Miss You, the Flirts. Just good 80s, four to the floor disco. This was a little odd. Um, still getting used to it. It's a little um, um, experimental in parts. It's called Environmental Studies, and I bought this because uh, Julian Cope is uh, on one of the tracks here, along with uh, Fat Paul, Philippe Legend, Christopher Holman, Holy McGrail. Don't know who the rest of those people are, but this is a 12-inch EP. I took a chance on it, and uh, pretty decent. Need to get used to it a little bit. Um, not the most musical record I, I have, but um, full of interesting sounds nonetheless. Environmental Studies. And then a 12-inch from Tim Burgess. This was marked down to $4.99. Tim Burgess, uh, singer of the Charlatans. And this is a 12-inch he did called Tracks of My Past. Nice down-tempo, more electronic um, based than uh, Charlatan stuff typically is. And then this is an act out of Scotland called Pearl Fishers. And uh, basically a vehicle for a man named David Scott. Good uh, guitar-based, laid-back pop along the lines of, like, Bell and Sebastian, maybe, or Lloyd Cole and the Commotions. And this album's called The Strange Underworld of the Tall Poppies. This album came out in the 90s, I think 97, and this is a reissue of it. All right, we move on to Blue Arrow Records, another one of my favorite record stores here in Cleveland. And uh, I'll show you a few of the things I got from them. First up, back... No, wait, I almost said Back from the Grave. This is called Battle of the Gra of the Garages, Volume 2. Battle of the Garages, Volume 2. This is a collection of uh, 80s bands doing uh, 60s-type sounds. You know, a lot of uh, sort of, um, I don't know, you know, garage psychedelic kind of thing. Bands like the Vipers, the Fuzz Tones, Prime Movers, look at that, Plastic Land, True West... These are all groups I was already familiar with, and then a whole host of others I'm not familiar with. So it's a good little sampler of stuff that was on the Vox label, V-O-X-X, -X, the Vox label, from the early 1980s. There you go. Bill Laswell's uh, more dance-oriented act from the 1980s, Material, and this is an album called One Down that they put out in 1982, I believe. Yep, yep. And uh, I already have a 12-inch from this called Don't Lose Control, which is really really good electro funk from the early 1980s and the rest of this is fantastic um and contains a lot of guests on here uh, nona hendrix originally from labelle she's on here uh fred frith is on here i'm looking at uh who else is on here oh on a track called memories whitney houston sings vocals on here and this is in 1982 before her solo career ever took off so, uh, interesting record here. I quite like it. Material, one down. This record I've, I've been wanting for a long time and, and just never got around to buying it, but found it for a, a good price, Hex. This is the first album by the duo of Donette Thayer. She uh, had been in the band called Game Theory, good uh, jangly uh, California band from the mid-'80s. And then uh, Steve Kilby, lead singer of The Church, he is the other half of this band, and this is just a, a kind of a mellow, laid-back, late-night album that um, they did together. They did do another album as well under the name Hex, and I don't have that one, so keep my eyes open for that. And then um, this one, Real Estate. Really love that band, Real Estate, um, by pretty much everything that they have. And this is an EP I never did own by them called Reality, and this came out in 2010. So a seven years old. Hard to believe they've been around that long, but here you go. 
It's a uh, six song mini album, Reality by Real Estate. If you haven't heard Real Estate, check them out if you're into felt or any of the uh, mid 80s college rock kind of indie jangly stuff. Check them out, you will like them. Here's a, speaking of indie jangly stuff with a 60s kind of feel, The Higher State. This is a UK band on the 13 o'clock label. And this is, I believe, their fifth album, is it? Um, it's their fourth or fifth album. And so they've been around a while. And uh, if you like the birds, you'll love The Higher State. They, they clearly like the birds. And you can just tell by the way they're dressed what they're all about. But very pop. They're not, you know, they're not into like big psychedelic noodling or anything like that. They do, you know, three minutes pop songs and jangle away. And when they're done, they're done. Good listen. So if you like the birds, check out the higher state. Oswad, reggae band, Oswad. This is an album they did called A New Chapter of Dub. Never did have, I don't have any Oswad as a matter of fact. So I've been looking to change that and thought, well, let's start with the dub album. I always like, that's always tends to be where I like to start. And this is an album that came out on the Mango label, a division of Island Records, and uh, came out in 1982, a new chapter of dub. Very good. I liked it. And if you like dub music, go ahead and get it. And then lastly, from Blue Arrow, this Reckless Eric album. It's a U.S. compilation of stuff from his first few releases, and it's uh, called The Whole Wide World, which is named after, of course, his his um, biggest hit, Whole Wide World by Reckless Eric. Good new wave-ish power pop. If you're not familiar with them, check out the song, Whole Wild, Whole Wide World. You'll like it. There's another really good song on here, too, that I like called Take the Cash. So um, you can check that out as well. All right, got a few more here to show you. I'm going to show you a few, th few things I picked up in Chicago. And then I think we'll call this video um, a draw because... Um, I don't want it to get too long. It's already at 17 minutes. So let's roll through these. Clearly, there will be a follow-up video to this. So picking up the two Slits albums that I never did own. Um, you know, I passed their stuff by all during the 80s. Don't know why I did. And now, of course, those originals are worth a, a pretty penny. So picking up the reissues, and this one just got reissued. It is uh, the second album, Return of the Giant Slits. A more laid-back affair than their first album, Cut. But good nonetheless, good mixture of post-punk and a little bit of reggae. And it comes on clear vinyl, clear yellowish vinyl. So, and of course, this thing will not go back in the sleeve. <laughs> there we go. Um, if you haven't heard the slits, check them out. Uh, their album Cut is a classic. It really is fantastic. If you like Public Image Limited, post-punk reggae dub kind of thing, check out the slits. There's a documentary coming out about them as well, so look out for that. Speaking of post-punk, here's a double album called uh, Punk 45, There Is No Such Thing as Society. And uh, this is part of Soul Jazz's um, reissue campaign of putting together these uh, underground compilations of, of, of punk and post-punk. There's quite a few of them out there. There's one documenting Cleveland, there's one documenting Akron, there's one documenting like proto-punk, and then this one documenting post-punk. And some of the stuff on here I already had, like Johnny Moped and uh, television personalities, but some stuff I didn't have, um, like the Eric Random track, uh, O-Level, The Freeze, Roses Are Red, The Prefects. There's a lot of stuff on here I didn't have, so I went ahead and picked it up. Great. If you like post-punk, this is right up your alley. The Mekons are on here, The Lines. Killjoys, which is Kevin Rowland's first band before Dexy's Midnight Runners. Great stuff. Can't say enough about it. They're not cheap. Those compilations typically run about 30 bucks, but they're high quality pressings and, um, you know, double vinyls. So, you know, I grab them, I grab them now and then. Here's a new band that uh, Dark Entries Records has put out. This is a band out of, oh, I forget where they're from. California? Could be wrong. Don't quote me on any of that. But they're called Flesh World, and this is an album called Into the Shroud. I believe it's their second album, and it just came out uh, this year in 2017. And if you like a dark guitar-based post-punk, this is right up your alley. Um, thing, if you're into like Interpol or Editors, um, you know, or, or Early Cure, 
you know, this is definitely uh, up your alley. Love it. <sighs> Golden Animals. This is a band um, I'd never heard before, but I found this for a cheap price in Chicago. Found these uh, Chicago records at, at uh, Reckless, by the way. Um, but this record was for like two bucks, and they're on the Reverberation uh, Appreciation Society label, which is the label that handles... Um, most of the stuff related to, like, Levitation, Austin Psych Fest, and Black Angels. I mean, all of that's kind of related to this um, label. And this is a band, Golden Animals, that were supposed to open for Black Angels when they came through Cleveland a few years ago. And for some reason, didn't wind up opening for them. So I was already familiar with the group. So I picked up this album, and, and I like, did like it. Most of the songs are really short, about two and a half, three minutes long. Garagey, psychedelic pop best way to describe it. If you like Black Angels, you, you could definitely uh, get into picking that one up. Here's another one on Dark Entries. Boy, I sure love that label, don't I? I feel like I'm <laughs> promoting them. But uh, I also love Thomas Lear. I've been a big fan of this guy for a long time. He's one of the earliest electronic pioneers of the post-punk movement in the late 1970s, putting out a single called Private Plane in 1978, I think. And... Um, he did a lot of recordings in 79 that went unreleased. And so this double album is the first issue of those tracks. They might have appeared on cassette at some point in time over the past, but this is the first time they've appeared on vinyl. And um, it's a double album comprising of about 15 songs, somewhere around there. Um, early electronic, if you like Cabaret Voltaire, or Throbbing Gristle, or Early Human League, um, or The Normal, you might want to check out Thomas Lear. He later uh, got a little more produced and slick in the mid-1980s doing an album for Arista, and then he hooked up with um, Claudia Bruken of, of Propaganda, and they did an album together in 1987, 88, called, uh, I forget the name of the album, but they, but they went under the name Act. So if you want to follow Thomas Lear a little bit more, there you go. Uh, the Multicolored Shades, kind of a 60s garage-ish type group, but they're from the 80s, and they were on the Situation 2 label, a subsidiary of Beggar's Banquet over in the UK. And this is a 12-inch called Teen Sex Transfusion. If you like uh, maybe The Cramps or uh, Folk Devils, I'm trying to think of anybody else they might be like. Just kind of swampy, garagey, Nick Cave even. Check out the Multicolored Shades. Into a Circle. This is a 12-inch that I didn't have by them called Forever. I have uh, three other releases by them, but didn't have this one. Kind of a gothy band, kind of like The Mission. And these two guys used to be members of the Southern Death Cult, uh, the band that Ian Asbury fronted in the early 1980s. And uh, when they split apart and he formed the Death Cult and the Cult, they formed a band called Getting the Fear for one single. <laughs> split that band up, and then formed into a circle and did a lot of lush, gothy-type indie music akin to the mission or All About Eve, into a circle. Jansen Barbieri. This is an album I never owned. I remember seeing it around back in the 80s, but never picked up a copy of it. And this is an album called Worlds in a Small Room, and it's Richard Barbieri and Steve Jansen, ex of Japan, following the more ambient style, style if I can speak, following the more ambient type music that Japan was heading into that direction. If you like Ghosts by Japan, you might like this. A little bit of um, funk, light funk, but mostly pretty ambient and mellow. Jansen Barbieri, Worlds in a Small Room, from 1986. And then um, picking a few more to show you here. As I mentioned in the last couple of videos, picking up UB40 12 inches as I find them. And this is one I found for a buck of I Got You Babe that they did with Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders. I always like their version of it. And the EP came with three extra tracks, including a dub version. So there you go. Here's one that's been on my want list for a while. A 12 inch of The Dance Society to... Uh, 2,000 light years from home. I always want to say 10,000 light years from home. The Dance Society. Fantastic mid-80s goth band with um, a lot of synthesizers. Um, a lot more synth-based than, say, your Bauhaus or, you know, type group. Um, I have the double 7-inch of this, but never had the 12-inch extended version. And uh, so now I do. And it also has an extended version of a track called Angel on the back. Dance Society. Check out their album, Heaven is Waiting, which is what this one comes from. Good album. 
And then the only album I never had by XTC, The Big Express. I always had my eye out for it and found a promo copy, a U.S. promo copy for a decent price and in good shape. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and bought it. Love it. I knew I'd like it. Uh, I had all the singles from it, Wake Up, All You Pretty Girls, and This World Over. But I didn't know the rest of the album. So gave it a listen, and I like it. And now I own every XTC record. Well, album at least. Kind of wanted to find the UK version of that, with the, which had a circular sleeve, but hey, you know what? Eventually, if it's meant to be, I'll find it. Here's a couple more here from the 60s, uh, an act I always like uh, called Dave D. Dozy, Bakey, Mick and Titch. Or Mick and Titch, yes. <laughs> and this is an album they did called Time to Take Off. Kind of a nice, uh, whimsical, psychedelic record, um, but more pop than psychedelic. Big hit on this in the UK was a song called Zabadak. But some of the early stuff it wasn't quite as garagey as I hoped it would be. Some of the earlier material when they were on Fontana was a lot more garagey, and that's the stuff I really want to find. But this album came out on Imperial in 1968. Dave D. Dozy, Bakey, Mitch, Mick, and Titch. Tough to say that. And last couple things, Ann Clark. This is an album called Pressure Points that she had released in 1985. Never had it. Now I do, and um, she does a lot of spoken word poetry over kind of dark, minimal, electronic, um, pulsating rhythms. <laughs> rhythms, and uh, so, so think Cabri Voltaire, if you're into that kind of thing, and Clark. Eurythmics, this is from their album Savage. I love to listen to Beethoven, one of my favorite songs by them, and I found a 12-inch of it, so I went ahead and picked it up. It has a couple mixes as well as a song called Heaven that I was previously unfamiliar with. 415 Music. This is uh, based out of the San Francisco area, hence the area code 415. And there's a label called 415 Records, which I believe this is um, associated with. Yeah, 415 Records. Sure is. And 415 Records is the home of Romeo Void and Translator, two bands I really liked a lot. And uh, so I went ahead and picked this up. This is an early compilation of bands from the era. And were there any here that I was familiar with? I think just one, SVT. That was the only band I'd ever heard of. The rest of it's just good guitar-based new wave power pop. And finally, out of Israel, Minimal Compact and their cover of Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song. One uh, I've been looking for for a long time. And, uh, the woman out of this group, Malka Spiegel, is married to Colin Newman of uh, Wire. A little bit of trivia there. All right, 27 minutes, uh, hitting 28 minutes. Ooh, didn't realize I was going on this long, but time flies when you're talking music, huh? Anyway, uh, clearly I need to do an, uh, a video, another video, if not two. So um, be on the lookout over the next few days for that. Other, I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. Keep that vinyl spinning and keep enjoying records and uh, show what you got. Talk to you soon.